Hi everybody and welcome back to my backyard once again. Today we're gonna take a look at one of the most affordable entry-level FPV kits out there. This is the Emax Tiny Hawk Lite and it's only 159 bucks. And you not only get the drone for that price, but also a pair of goggles to fly FPV and the radio controller as well. Let's open the box and see what's inside. Boom, nice presentation. You got the drone first, of course, with the little 1S battery on the bottom. An extra set of propellers, the radio, goggles, a very beefy accessory pouch with a USB-C and one micro USB cable. This is the extra screws and tools to service your drone. Then a multiple 1S battery charger that plugs into the USB. And a little screen holder for your radio. I'm gonna show you later what it does. You also get stickers and warning cards. Two 5.8 GHz antennas for the goggles. And an extra set of battery connectors. Let's take a look at the drone first. This is the Emax Tiny Hawk Lite, hence the name of the whole kit. It's a little 75 mm, 37 gram. Tiny Whoop, which is small and light enough and protected enough to be flown indoors. The injection molded frame is super light but also very springy, so I believe this drone will take a beating, no problem. The propellers are very nice, HQ 40mm, and the motors are 0816 brushed. Now, we usually use brushless because they are a little bit more powerful, but these motors are quite big, so I believe it's gonna be able to do a little bit of freestyle as well. Let's check it out later. But, nice thing, these motors are cheaper, of course it's a cheaper kit, but it's also cheaper for you to replace. You can buy packs of it on Amazon and just replace them very easily because it's just a wire and it's connected by a plug inside the main board, so you don't even need to solder anything. It's gonna be easy for beginners. The battery tray at the bottom uses rubber bands to host the 750 milliamps 1S battery. This is nice because you can fit multiple sizes of batteries. The battery uses this kind of EM 2.0 connector, which is not super widespread, so be careful if you want to buy other batteries, they have this connector. If you are able to solder, they give you the extra plugs. The flight controller is a stock FPV drone flight controller just made for brushed drone. It is made for 1S but it uses a F4 processor which is what you see in many other FPV drones and is running beta flight just like the standard of all the FPV drones out there. So you have a great learning curve on this drone. Very nice to see a USB-C plug for connecting to your computer and this red antenna is a built-in ExpressLRS receiver module. If you are not aware, ExpressLRS is one of the most widespread protocols nowadays, so this drone is really up-to-date and compatible with many other radios. The video system of this drone is analog. They put a Rankam Nano 3 camera and also the VTX is 400 milliwatts, which it's very pleasing because it's a lot of power on such a tiny drone, you will have a nice amount of range. It seems like they didn't make many compromises at all on this drone. Maybe the only thing is the brushed motors because they are a little bit cheaper, but I still have to test performance, so this drone may still surprise me. The radio is a Emax E8 transmitter and it's a very competent, of course, entry-level radio. First thing first, I love the fact that it ships with a battery included because usually they skip on it. The plastic feels nice, it doesn't creak, it feels very sturdy, the gimbals as well are made of plastic, but they are quite big and they are comfortable when in the hand. The stick ends and the switches are made of metal, and one of the best features, they labeled what the stick do. This is one of the first times I see that in an entry-level kit, and I want to see more like this, because if you are a beginner, knowing at a glance what everything does, is golden. This is the power button and these the trims for the channels, which is rare to find on an entry-level radio. Even if it doesn't have a screen, you have tactile trims. So if your drone is flying sideways, you can correct this attitude by pressing on the trims. At the bottom you have two ports. One is a 3.5 mm jack to be used with a coach radio, so if you lose control of the drone, another pilot can take over. And this is a USB-C plug for charging the battery and connecting the radio to your computer. There you can update the internal transmitter and also you can use this radio with a simulator so you can safely practice. But the best part about this radio is it has an integrated Espresso LRS 2.4 GHz 150 milliwatts transmitter. 
This means it's a super widespread protocol with drones. It's gonna be compatible with 99% of the drones in the market right now. In the past, you had the entry-level kits that had really not very widespread protocols. So if you wanted to buy another drone, you couldn't use the radio you bought. You had to throw it away. Instead, this radio with this protocol is kind of future-proof. Of course, it's still an entry-level radio, but if you buy other drones, it's gonna be compatible with them as well. It seems like they didn't really make compromises on the radio. The goggles have a couple of tricks as well. These are the Emax Transporter 2 and they are super, super small to the point that my nose touches the front of the goggles. But this is the first time I see something like this. You can pull and focus adjust and also now my nose fit. And you actually have three levels of adjustment because there is a little clasp but that fits into these slots. Super nice, if you need to refocus them, it's a very cheap but smart way to do that. And there is a little rubber membrane that keeps the light out. For my face, I have a big face that barely fit my eyes and I have a little bit of light leakage from the bottom as well. But for being entry-level goggles, it's fine. The screen is personalized and actually, it feels very, very needed when you look into it. And also the brightness is fine. But what do you do if you wear goggles because no goggles will fit inside the air? Well, they thought about it because you can actually detach the screen and you can use it as a standalone screen with your goggles on. If you take this accessory and slot it at the top of your radio, you can now fit the screen on top of it and fly hands free. And if you want to put it on a tripod, you can do that as well with the tripod mount. At the side, you have three buttons. This is the little reset pin. Then you have a on off and menu button. This is the automatic search. And on the other side, the manual band and channel selectors and a little micro USB here. You can see a missing button here and a missing SD card slot on the other side. This is because it doesn't come with a DVR, which can be a deal breaker for some people who wanna record their flight footage. They have more expensive entry-level kit that have the DVR, but maybe you don't need it or maybe you can buy an external DVR recorder. They are very cheap, 10, 15 bucks, connect it to your phone and record your flights there. At the top, you have an LED and the two antennas because these goggles have diversity. So you put an antenna like this, one like this, and you have a little better signal. And finally, it's time to fly. I'm gonna use another set of goggles to record the drone footage. Oh, no, okay, it was in the grass. Okay, so this camera is uh, for whoops. So with these kind of cameras for whoops, they don't do the best with a strong light like this. A lot of contrast because the sun is setting. So it will be kind of hard for me to go find chicken. So fly to ice, the drone is feeling nice. It's very, very, very slow, which for me, of course, I'm not used for <laughs> to drones that react this slowly. But for a beginner, I can see it will help you. Take your time, it doesn't overreact to maneuvers and to the throttle. It's super, super smooth. And you can see we are flying outside. Now, if I could find a chicken, I would be the happiest person ever. They say it's gonna be able to do around uh, eight minutes of flying indoors. If you fly like this with one battery, which is uh, very fine, because usually drones don't do that. No. Uh, it's a little bit underpowered. Okay, I lowered the camera angle a little bit, so probably I can see the chicken better, better now. E yeah, it's a little bit underpowered, so if you start going faster, the drone uh, likes to drop a little bit. But finally, we have the chicken. <laughs> well, today the chicken chase, it's a little bit slow. <laughs> if I start to add horizontal thrust, the drone, I am 100% throttle right now. And you can see it's not climbing very fast. So you really have to be careful, of course, 
when the battery is fresh maybe you can try doing a couple of flips but really this is mostly a drone for practicing you see it's going down i am full throttling so yeah okay it's a fresh battery i'm sorry the radio is doing this noise but uh, <laughs> i forgot to charge it but still even on a fresh battery you see it doesn't climb very fast now i have to be very careful because i have the pull and i don't see doing tricks going well for sure you can put it in acro and it's gonna fly just like a real fpv drone just much much more tamer much much more tamer uh, and yeah it's really underpowered you see uh, no you cannot use it for flips okay let's fly very slow and steady which is uh, what this drone is made for and let's go chase some chicken <laughs> okay so for chasing chicken and get the initial hang of fpv flying and the movements it's fine but of course it's gonna leave you wondering and it's gonna leave you needing more very soon like it's gonna be good for the first couple of months you fly when you master the feeling of fpv and the movements but then when you start craving for more and craving for uh, acro maybe you can do a little bit of acro get the feeling of flying fully manual mode just like um, a neo the neo is a little bit more powerful but it's also a lot more expensive it could be a nice thing if you want to practice this kind of uh, proximity flying and indoors of course because the drone is very tame you can take it slow really under you see it, it just bounces you can understand the maneuvers pass under the chair and it just oh no 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 that dog that dog is a rascal i thought he was gonna bite the drone of course this drone is totally inoffensive like the propellers stop super easily and even if i pushed at the beginning we are flying for four minutes and 26 now so it seems like the battery if you fly slow and steady can last a surprising amount of time there you go there you go all the chicken lined up the perfect shot and they are not uh, particularly scared of this drone because it's so inoffensive look at this <laughs> man it's a shame we cannot record with the integrated goggles how are you gonna share <laughs> these shenanigans on instagram okay i feel that the battery starts to to be depleted yes 3.3 time to land but we have been flying for six minutes which is uh, impressive for a tiny whoop so who do i recommend this kit for because usually i recommend people that want to start fpv to get something like a dji avata dji neo because they are super easy to learn they are super easy to get good recordings from them if you want to also practice a little bit of cinematics and once you grow out of them you still have dji goggles and a dji radio that are compatible with all of the hd drones out there and it's probably the best transmission system you can go much further and you see much better it's a much better experience in my opinion but that comes at a big price so if you don't have the kind of money or you don't want to spend that much to learn if you like fpv or not probably the less you spend the better it is because even if you pay 250 bucks 300 bucks for an entry-level kit you still get a cheap radio cheap pair of goggles and a cheap drone most of the times and most of this gear you will want to upgrade very soon so in my opinion this kit hits the nail on the spot because it's one of the most affordable you still get a very very good radio that is also kind of future proof you can use it with other drones the goggles are great the only downside they don't have dvr if you don't care about recording it's gonna be fine if you care about recording 
you either buy a different kit, you either upgrade your goggles, or you buy an external recorder. What concerns the drone, I was expecting a little bit more power initially, because I'm used to much more powerful drones, but being for beginners and being for indoors, maybe it's a pro, because the drone is gonna be reacting very slowly to your movements, it's super stable as well, and it climbs and descends again very slowly, so it's much safer indoors, and it gives you time to really understand how it's moving and how to counter-react. Of course, you're gonna master this kind of early, after a few months, you're gonna be wanting more, because probably you're also practicing tricks on the simulator. This drone cannot really do tricks very well and it cannot go very fast. So probably at that point, spend a hundred bucks and just get a more powerful toothpick kind of drone. And you can still use the gear it comes with. And that's all for today. As always, remember to like, subscribe and comment on this video. Let me know what you think about this inexpensive entry-level kit. And if you want to buy something, check out the links in the description below, because clicking on them, you help my channel a lot. Stay safe and happy flying. Bye.